morning, good morning. Um, good morning, women. It's Mothers of Zion, good morning. I wanna start out this morning, get Kelly time to get herself completely ready. So we'll do communion first. And so I'm gonna give y'all time to get uh, ready for the idea of starting out with communion this morning. I guess, like uh, those of you who weren't here just a few seconds ago, good morning. And Callie will be on in just a minute. I'm going to get started with communion first. I'm going to read out of Isaiah 53. He was like a root out of dry ground, there was no beauty or a royal majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. That's because the world focuses on the outward, they didn't see the, the, the purpose or quality or importance of Jesus Christ because he came as a servant, as a man, as a carpenter. And sometimes we judge the same way. We need to learn to to judge things by the Spirit, see people by the Spirit. The outside means nothing. So we have to learn to do that too because he was already uh, being judged and seen as not anything special because he wasn't super beautiful or in his appearance or in his um, lineage. He didn't come out of royalty as far as they were concerned. So they didn't... Uh, there was nothing attracting him to them in the outward appearance, but yet everyone was attracted to him because God was in him and with him and through him, revealing himself. So he was despised and rejected by men, not the common man, but the leaders and the spiritual leaders and the other leaders. They didn't uh, like his influence. Because of that, he was known as a man of sorrows and suffering. He was also a man of joy at the same time. He said uh, he had joy above his other brothers. He had joy and he was a man of sorrows at the same time. Isaiah 53. We're reading Isaiah 53. And like one whom we hid our faces from, he was despised and we esteemed him not. So Jesus' suffering uh, in Isaiah 53 is foretold what would happen and it's not just suffering in his body. Uh, he is uh, suffering in the way he's being treated and the way he's not, he's been taken lightly and made irrelevant in the eyes of the leaders and the spiritual leaders and the other people that rejected him. So he's suffering the rejection of humanity as well. So we all suffer that. He suffered it for us so that we don't have to be rejected. We've been accepted by God, our Creator, and by all those who love God and love His children. Because if you love God, you love His children. So you're accepted and loved by uh, God and His children. And you don't have to be accepted by everybody to feel good about yourself. So we thank you for that, Lord Jesus, that you suffered for us so that we don't have to suffer. He took up our infirmities and our sicknesses and our weaknesses and our sorrows and our pains, and he carried him away to the cross, and he was, he put it on the cross, and it was punishment for those things that were put on the cross, so that we might receive healing and deliverance and salvation, forgiveness and righteousness and holiness. He was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was put on him, and by his deep wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have tried to go our own way, but the Lord laid on him our iniquity. He was oppressed and afflicted, and he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. So it's Isaiah 53. That helps get our minds set for what was going on at the cross. When we think about it, communion, and we remember, we don't just remember Jesus with his disciples before he went to the cross, but also we remember the awful price, the terrible price, the horrific price that he was willing to pay. Love is willing to pay. This is what he's showing us what love is willing to do. Love is willing to sacrifice. Love is willing to serve. Love is willing to surrender its own will for the good of others. 
And so he's showing us the greatest lesson right there. So we, um, we can learn from his example and compare our, is our love, is our love looking like God's love? Does it look like Jesus' love? So Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for remember, and we thank you for your body that was, that was but, uh, bloodied and beaten and hung on a tree and your flesh torn from you. It's just horrific in everything that they did to you. Everywhere you bled, though, your blood was paving the way for our forgiveness, our healing, and our deliverance. We thank you, Lord, that if we feel rejected by the world, it's okay because you were rejected, and you said that's going to happen. But those who love God and love you will not reject us. Lord, we thank you for your body. We receive our healing today. We receive healing in every part of our body, our mind. We receive peace. We're not going to live in worry, fear, and anxiety. God told us not to. He said, bring everything to him in prayer and cast our cares upon him, and he will keep our minds in perfect peace. So we do that this morning. We cast every care, every worry, every fear, every anxiety on you, and we receive your peace in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blood that washes us, cleanses us from all unrighteousness, makes us righteous and holy, set apart, sanctified. We thank you for your blood. Are you, are you ready? So Jesus being our sacrifice and our example of what really love looks like through his sacrifice. And like I said, we can measure ourselves against that. <clears throat> Agape love is, is God's type of love. It's a sacrificial serving love. It's had, and he puts others first. The Bible says to consider others above or before yourself. Or not to ignore yourself and mistreat yourself and you know not take care of your health. That's not what it's saying. The three greatest commandments, I say the three, it's really two, but it's kind of like three because you're in there, is to love God, love people, and to love yourself. Because it says to love people as you love yourself. <clears throat> if you hate yourself, how are you gonna love people? <clears throat> if you can't see the value in who you are and who, how God made you, how can you see the value in other people? So love God first, we put him first. We can practice that by putting him first in our day. Before you get on your phone, before you go to get your drink, before you start feeding your body, before you start getting your soul distracted with other things, by putting him first in your day and say, I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna train my soul to be submissive to the spirit by saying, no, we're not gonna think about that right now. We're gonna put our mind and we're gonna put God first and we're gonna pray like we're doing this morning. We're gonna put God first in our day. It's good training the, of the soul. The soul wants to be first. The soul's used to being center of the universe. We're used to being center of the universe, but God, we have to learn and we have to put God at the center and say, it's what God wants today that counts. I'm just circling <laughs> that big center of the universe, God, and then people get to be a priority after that, and then I can put my life priority last, but it doesn't have any priority. It, it, it's not like it doesn't have any, it's last, but we still give it priority. I'm gonna take care of myself. I'm gonna do what I can and get rest, but I'm also willing to sacrifice my rest. I'm willing to sacrifice my desires to, to eat or be fed or be uh, taken care of or all the things that the self wants, wants. Not just the body, the body wants things, but the self wants things. It wants to be entertained, it wants to be um, approved of, it wants to be thought of as something great we want to have purpose and we want to feel uh, like we're somebody important and that's natural and that's good as long as it, as long as that comes from the right place the the we got to get it all of our who we are and our importance and our um, who we are needs to be our identity needs to all be coming from christ and not what the world can do for us so we just um, we can honor the lord and learn to sacrifice and love like he does and one of the ways we can do that is what we're doing now by putting him first in our day and uh, letting everything else wait, telling our soul to shut up and let's focus on Jesus this morning and telling our body, you're going to wait and you're going to eat when I'm done. It's good practice because um, we are limited on what we can do by God, by the ability that we have to put our spirit first and allow the, the soul to be subject to the spirit. Most of the time, our soul is running the show are our bodies and we can't God can't use a wild 
um, if, he, if he was talking about a horse that would need to be trained to pull a carriage, it's not good to try to hook up a wild horse to the carriage. It's just going to take off and go anywhere it wants. God can't direct somebody who's still out of control and they're still running the show. They're letting their soul run the show. So, Lord, we thank you today for your sacrifice and your submission that you showed to your Heavenly Father. You came down and became a man and a servant, humbled yourself, served people, loved people, and you always went and prayed and asked God's will, and you asked for God's help. And even though you were a God, you came down and you took off all your godliness as far as your abilities. You didn't use them. You just became a man and and did things just like we can do. So now you are a perfect example for us because of what you did. And you showed us that dependence on God is, is the only way. And serving others and loving others and being willing to sacrifice. Lord, we just thank you for your example. We thank you for the pain and the suffering you were willing to go through for someone that you love. And help us all, oh Lord, to do that as well. Be willing to take pain and suffering if it means to help someone else. Amen. Inconvenience, all the things that it, it costs, it costs, it, there's a price to love someone. Yes. But love is always willing to pay the price. We thank you for that, Lord, that you paid the price for us. Help us to live by your example, to love you and pay the price that it takes to put you first and to put others first. And that, uh, I'm ready for mm-hmm. counting. May I send you um, a couple of chapters I'd like to read off your phone? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bob. What an opportunity it is to take communion every morning and to spend time in your presence. Lord, I just thank you. You know, uh, one of the things that I've been doing, and Pastor Bob actually, you know, I've always read my Bible and prayed scriptures, but I've been taking a lot of time lately just praying whole chapters. And I can't tell you the peace and the power that comes with praying the chapters, uh, different chapters of the Bible as the Lord leads. So I want to encourage you when you get up in the morning and you have your quiet time with the Lord, or if you go on in to a quiet time after we get off this broadcast, um, ask the Lord to lead you to chapters because there's nothing like praying the word. There's nothing like praying the word. Something about praying the word um, just... Um, it, it, it transforms your life. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray today. Uh, we're going to pray Psalm 61 today. So I want you to get your Bible if you want to, or you can just pray with me and agree with me and then read this and mark this later. <clears throat> Psalm 61, I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. Uh, it's a prayer for protection to the pure and shining one, a song for the guitar by King David. So he wrote this for, especially for the instrument of the guitar. Oh God, hear my prayer, listen to my heart's cry. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that today you're listening to our hearts cry. And everyone, every lady on this, every man, everyone that's praying may have a different heart's cry, but you're listening to our hearts cry. For no matter where I am, even when I'm far from home, I will cry out to you for the Father's help. Lord, we need your help. We need your help. We need your help in every choice we make. We need your help in the love that you've called us to manifest to our enemies, to our family, to our, to our societies, God, in our jobs, in our businesses, in our, in our relationships, in our churches. We need your help and we need your love to manifest in us. I will cry out to you for my Father's help. When I'm feeble and overwhelmed by life, guide me into your glory where I am safe and sheltered. Lord, I just thank you that we are walking in your glory that we are following after your presence where we are safe and sheltered. And no matter what is going on around us, your glory is our uh, clothing. It is we are literally drenched in your glory. And Lord, we just thank you for leading us to your glory. Uh, Lord, you you are a paradise of protection to me. You lift me high above the fray. 
Lord, I just thank you that you're a, you're a protection for all of us. You're a protection for our families. You're a protection for our children. You lead us above the fray and the noise and the, and the confusion of this world. We don't get caught in the, uh, the devil's traps or confusion, but we see things and hear things by your spirit and we live in the realm of blessing and peace and honor and order in Jesus' name. You lift me high above the fray. None of my foes can touch me when I'm held firmly in your wrap-around presence. Lord, I just declare that your wrap-around presence is, a, is literally around my life and around these daughters of Zion, these mothers, these grandmothers that are seeking you today, that your wrap-around presence is our portion and that we that no dart of the enemy no arrow of the enemy no deception of the enemy no plot of the enemy no plan of the enemy will have its way in our lives but we will walk in freedom we will walk in the glory of the lord we will walk in power and an anointing and we will see the salvation lord of you you your salvation will manifest in our lives May he support you from Zion's fortress. Wow. May, um, may supernatural help be sent from his sanctuary. May he support you from Zion's fortress. May he remember every gift you've given to him and celebrate every sacrifice of love you've shown him. May Yahweh give you every desire of your heart and carry out every plan as you behave. Lord, I just thank you that every... Every plan is carried out. Um, Lord, you are our par paradise of protection to me. You lift me high above the fray. None of my foes can touch me when I'm held firmly in your wraparound presence. Keep me in your glory. Let me live continually under the splendor, splendor shadow, hiding my life in you forever. Pause in his presence. You have heard my sweet resolutions to love and serve you, for I am your beloved. Lord, I just thank you that I'm your beloved, that these women are your beloved. We are your beloved. Our head is laid upon your chest, Lord, and you have given me an inheritance of rich treasures. Lord, I just thank you that you have given us an inheritance of rich tre treasures in every area of our lives. When you give to all, your devoted lovers. I thank you, Lord, that as you give to me a devoted lover of yours, you have given me rich treasures. You have given your handmaidens rich treasures. You treat me like a king, giving me a full and abundant life. Years and years of reigning, like many generations rolled into one. We have long life, long healthy life, and we will declare the goodness of the Lord forever and ever. We will declare his goodness. We will declare his righteousness. We will declare that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I live enthroned with you forever. Guard me, God, with your unending, unfailing love. Guard us with your unending, unfailing love. Let me live uh, my days walking in grace and truth before you. I declare that grace and truth is our portion, and my praises will fill the heavens forever, fulfilling my vow to make every day a love gift to you. Lord, I just thank you that every day my life is going to be a love gift to you, a love gift to you. I prophesy that, that there are 233 women that are going to receive right now a love gift from you and our life is going to be a love gift to you that we are learning that relationship with you is communion that relationship with you is not just me getting in a room and begging you for things but a relationship with you is a time that i can love you and honor you and then i can receive your love and receive your strength. It's a time that I can ask you for things, but you can ask me for things. 
We are in relationship, Father. We are in relationship. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are our King and our God. There is none beside you. There is none that stand on the holy hill but you, Lord. You are high and lifted up. Your train fills the temple. We honor you today. We honor you today. We honor, there's a, there's a lady by the name of Lily. God is healing Lily today. Lily, you are being healed by the power and the blood of Jesus. God is healing Lily today. Whoever Lily is, I want someone to get the word to her. If you're watching, I want to hear from you. If it's someone connected to someone on this broadcast, please let me know. Lily's being healed by the power and the blood of Jesus today. Of Jesus today. Ladies, I want you to raise your hands. I feel the healing balm of Jesus today. I literally felt his power just hit my body. And I want you to raise your hands and receive God's healing today. Right now, you're being healed. Some of you are being healed of depression. Some of you are being healed of migraine headaches. Some of you are being healed of gut issues. Some of you are being healed of being uh, sad or depressed. Some of you are being healed of anxiety. Just raise your hands. God's doing it. Pastor Callie couldn't heal a soul if my life depended on it. But the God inside of me can heal anyone or anything. The God inside of you. Jehovah God is a healer. And he is moving today through me and through this broadcast and through you today. And he is healing you. He is healing you right now. You are being healed of the Lord. There's also a powerful anointing for provision right now. So whatever you want or need, need or want, I want you to ask for it. I hear the Lord yeah. saying ask. Ask for presence. I hear the Lord saying ask for presence. Ask for presence. Ask for presence. I hear the Lord saying ask me for a present. I'll give it to you. If you don't ask, you won't get it. But if you ask, you will get it. There's an anointing to give presents. Lord, I just thank you for the land that my husband wants with a nice house on it and a little country place for us. I thank you for it. I thank you for that present. That's just a present we want. I thank you for a present. Ask the Lord for the presents that you want. I feel an anointing for presents today, for gifts. God wants to give you gifts. God wants to give you personal gifts today. Personal gifts, personal gifts. Receive the anointing for personal gifts. Ask for personal gifts. Lord, I thank you that you're giving your handmaidens, you're giving these women that love you so much personal gifts. I hear the Lord saying, it's Christmas today. Ask me for a gift. Ask me for a gift. I ask you, Lord, for the gift of immense love. I ask you, Lord, for the gift of a desire for you beyond anything that I've ever had in my life. A desire for prayer, a desire for holiness. I want, I want such that desire to envelop me that it feels like a gift. <clears throat> that it's so strong, it's like a gift. Ask for gifts. God is giving gifts today. Gifts of healing, presents, money, land, Children being saved, ask for gifts, whatever your gift is. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Today we pray 
for the United States of America. I ask you for the gift of revival across this nation. I ask you for the gift of salvation across this nation. I ask you, Lord, that the glory of the Lord would fill the temple. I ask you, the Lord, that the glory of the Lord would fill the temple, would fill our churches, would fill our homes, would fill every portion of our lives. We thank you that the glory of the Lord is being manifest, manifested in our lives. Listen, ladies. I want you to listen to me. If you haven't gotten your ticket to crowned, you need to get it. The glory of the Lord will manifest at this gathering. It is going to be a, uh, a gathering like none we've ever been in before. And it's not because it's of really who we're having. The, it's because of Jesus. It's because, it's, listen, we've got some wonderful speakers, some wonderful anointed women, but it's not because of that. It's because Jesus is going to show up and Jesus is going to heal and his glory is going to manifest and you don't want to miss it. You want to be right slap dab in the middle of it. So I declare and decree that women from all over the United States will pour in here by the hundreds and there's already hundreds of you signed up, but I'm telling you, you need to get your ticket. The seats are limited. And those that are in the building are going to receive something that's, that they'll never forget. And we love you with all of our heart. And we'll see you in the morning. God bless you. I declare the blessing of the Lord over you in Jesus' name.